Hey everyone, and welcome to This Week in News Tech, the podcast where we discuss the innovations happening in journalism. I'm your host, Matt Larson, and today we're going to start off our top story is on the Journalism Sustainability Act. It still hasn't passed, but we got some more details on it. What it entails, mainly tax credits to incentivize good behavior. First of all, we'll look at the subscriber targeted tax credit up to $250 to incentivize subscriptions and donations to local news. We've also got a $5,000 tax credit for small businesses that buy ads in their local publications. And lastly, it seems like the most significantly, the payroll tax credit to make hiring local reporters, editors, photographers, and other journalists easier, and of course, helping keep them on. In this example, for a local reporter making $50,000 a year, the tax credit would cover half of her salary in year one and 30% in the remaining years. Next up, we've got a new update from uh, the engineers over at our hometown. We're working really hard on building tools for local journalists to work on WordPress and to maximize the reach of their content. And we're focusing on the audio format right now. Audio articles, uh, playlists is a new feature available that we just released. The playlist is really exciting to us. I mean, if you look around uh, at a lot of the major Metro dailies, they have audio articles, uh, same as we do. Let's see if I can find an example here. Right here, listen to the article. Facebook employees flag drug cartels. In fact, it sounds like they're using a very similar technology. But I think the key with audio is to have it in a playlist format. You want to be able to allow the user to hit play and then just let it go and listen to the whole newspaper. And so that's the main innovation that we've got now. I mean, we've had the on article player for over a year. But with this, uh, it's, it's really a fantastic interface. It's kind of inspired by Spotify and, you know, a lot of the playlist driven tools um, and applications that are out there. So let's take a look at a live example here of what we have at the Cattle Business Weekly. So they've got these collections across the top, top audio articles driven by uh, their stats, uh, looking at articles by segment, you know, in the, into the archives, this week's articles, last week's, this month, last month. Then you've got just a stream of the most recent audio articles published and then broken down by category. Uh, these are all you know, common uh, ways that people like to browse the audio. If you're interested in learning more about this, just contact us at ourhometown.com slash audio articles playlist is actually, or podcast, excuse me. That's the URL you're going to want to go to. Uh, we'll be sure to put this in the video comments and you can sign up right here for a free month trial. Uh, After that, it's just $99 a month for 2 million characters transcribed each month. And very straightforward sign-up process there. And we can do that as a third party. Uh, We don't need to manage the WordPress website. Um, But if you are on our WordPress platform, it's a simple plug-in to turn that on. Okay, also in the news, we've got a uh, brief update here from Google News. Uh, This update that they've released could mean more traffic for newspapers. Let's uh, give this audio article a listen. News Brief, Google News Update could mean more traffic for newspapers. Google recently announced that they are changing the way they share content through the Google News program, and it could have big impact on the traffic your website is seeing. Traditionally, Google News has used RSS feeds to collect news content from news publishers and render it directly within the Google News application or on Google's website. While this resulted in more eyes on the shared content and perhaps some brand exposure, Most of the readers viewing the content never actually visited the website where the content originated. In a sense, publishers were trading their page views for the perceived exposure of being featured within Google News. Google's new announcement will change all of that, as they are doing away with the RSS feed approach and will instead begin sending readers directly to the article's source, your website. As a result, you should more traffic being sent to your website from Google, allowing you to truly reap the benefits of Google News and hopefully generate some revenue off of your new audience in the form of new subscriptions or ad revenue. Okay, last news brief today. This is an interesting update. A lot of pressure must be happening on Apple to change their monetization strategy, but Apple reduces revenue share for news publishers Those making less than $1 million annually in the App Store will now receive 85% of the revenue from subscriptions as opposed to the 70% they were getting before uh, with Apple taking a 30% cut. 
Uh, they've also got this news partner deal, which provides the same uh, 85% revenue to the publisher for all outlets that make over a million dollars, but also publish a robust amount of content in Apple News ecosystem. So bottom line is they basically cut their revenue share in half from 30 to 15%. Will this have an impact on the demand from local news publishers for apps? I would imagine it would. So we stand ready with our apps uh, to meet that demand. And uh, we are gonna actually have to do some development to make this work because we've been sending subscribers back to the website to subscribe and then log into the app. We definitely think it makes sense to offer it as an option to sell subscriptions actually directly through the app. So you can see the, a clear ROI on that. And really uh, the app turns into a sales tool then rather than just a value add for the current subscribers. Okay, that's all we've got for this week in uh, news tech. Thanks for checking out this episode and we'll see you next week.